This is Nina Curley from Wamda Media. I'm here chatting with Bert Herman, the co-founder of Storify, a social news curation platform. Bert, how are you? I'm great, yeah, thank you very much. Excellent, so you told us in your panel just now that you worked for the AP as a reporter um, in, I guess, conflict zones uh, for 12 years. Um, what inspired you to build Storify? Well, yeah, I was working as a journalist, but at the same time, obviously social media was rising and giving people this amazing power to publish what they were seeing in front of them from everywhere in the world and we saw this happen you know in Egypt during the Arab Spring the plane landing in the Hudson River in New York I mean all these events where you know people are closer to, to the, the events than any journalist could be you didn't know you needed to be there so you know I was just thinking ways to leverage that and uh, came together with my co-founder Xavier who was looking at ways to make social media more relevant to normal people, like kind of elevating the voices that matter. So through putting these ideas together, we, we came up with the, with Storify, which is basically, yeah, trying to make a easy platform where you can, in one place, search all different social networks like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, YouTube, and bring it all together into a story and publish that and then embed it on any website. How did you carve out a niche when it comes to, you know, convincing people for the need to have that layer between just social media spewing onto the internet and then a curated, sensical feed that people can read? Yeah, I think, I mean, it just kind of seems obvious in some ways. There is just so much media out there. You know, Twitter says that 400 million tweets are sent every day. YouTube has 72 hours of video uploaded every minute. Facebook has 300 million photos that are shared a day. There's just so much stuff out there. I mean, that's that's kind of web 2.0, the social media era where we're empowering all these people to publish, but you know, where do we go from there? Like, what do we take it to the next level to actually find all this stuff, the stuff that matters to you? And I think curation is a huge part of that. And uh, yeah, and the way we were able to kind of get this to spread is by leveraging the internet too. I mean, by, uh, by making our stories embeddable anywhere so that other websites could take them and, and put them on their site. And actually, we, we still get more traffic on other websites than on our own website. Also, what we did is think of ways to make these stories social. So it's not just pulling from social networks, but also pushing back to the social networks. So when you quote people in Storify, you can actually notify them you know, and tweet at them and say, hey, you're quoted in this story. And, you know, people are really flattered by that and want to share that with their friends to show that, you know, I said something and somebody cared about what I had to say. So, you know, we're really trying to think of ways to make this kind of a virtuous cycle of publishing and, and you know, leverage social media on both sides. Yeah, it makes sense, I mean, because that's the difference between someone just opening up a blog and saying, okay, I'm going to pull in from social media anyway, versus I have this ready-made package that makes it really simple for me to do that. Um, but you guys have also then partnered with major media organizations. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, from working as a journalist, I guess I had some connections with this. I actually started a meetup group in San Francisco called Hacks and Hackers, which was all about bringing journalists and technologists together. And that idea actually kind of spread, it's actually spread all over the world now. So that was a great way of starting a group around this interest, but also giving us a platform to contact, you know, journalists and media companies who wanted to innovate and do new things. I mean, that group has chapters all over the world, in London, in Argentina, in New York, in Boston, in Africa, not yet in the Middle East. We need to, you know, get things going here too. But uh, I, I think kind of connecting with people who share, you know, these kind of vision of where things can be uh, is, is how we've been able to really grow and it's, it's been amazing. I think it just, you know, we're in this time where people are figuring out what the future of media will be and everybody is actually really open to trying lots of things. And I think for startups, you know, that's also a great opportunity to, to work with these big companies and, and uh, get more distribution than you could on your own. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, speaking of the future of media, how do you guys plan to eventually monetize? So, yeah, right now we haven't extensively monetized anything, actually, but we've started experimenting with some pro kind of features, working with bigger publishers to give them extra support and certain features. We also do want to, in the future, experiment with advertising, but, I mean, that requires building up to a, a very large scale and building a market around that, so that's something still for the future. We're still very 
small. We only have seven people full time at the company. Only been out for a year and a half or so in public release. So yeah, it's still very early, and we're seeing where we're going to go. I didn't realize you only had seven people. It's impressive. Yeah, Twitter has 1,300 employees. We have seven. So yeah, we're <laughs> we have a long way to uh, to grow, and uh, and it also is just a testament to technology now how you can do so much with so little and reach so many people. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for chatting with WAMDA, and hopefully we'll see someone start up one of these. What is the name again? Hackers? Hacks and Hackers. Yeah, it's journalists and technologists. Yeah, we need more of that. Hacks and Hackers. I'll, we'll get it running in Beirut.